today another video. This is going to be a series of three videos, a trilogy just like Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings. What we're going to do is this video is going to be unboxing a 4GB RAM Extron's Android head unit. The second video is going to be benchmarking the existing 2GB RAM Extron's Android head unit. And then the third video is going to be installing this unit, a 4GB RAM Extron's head unit. And then we're going to benchmark this one. So the second video will be benchmarking the 2GB version of this unit. The third video we're benchmarking the third version. And the answer is going to be, does memory matter when you're buying an Android head unit? Because the two units are fairly close together, the main difference between them is going to be the amount of RAM. So does it make a difference? Is it going to give better performance? Uh, this is not sponsored by Extrons, um, so it'll it's just it's all paid for by me. So whatever this comes out as, uh, we're going to find out. I, I ordered this unit on Thursday afternoon. Uh, don't know if you can see it, but it's actually got next day there. Even though I didn't pay for next day delivery, it, uh, just had standard free delivery and it arrived on Saturday morning. So ordered on Thursday afternoon, arrived Saturday morning. Emails were sent to say it was on the way. No problems with any of that. It's now Sunday afternoon, and as you can see, it's not been opened yet. If you look on the side, it's got the model number. Right, if you want to have a look and see whether, the, whenever you're watching this video, whether this model is still available. Okay, made in China, which doesn't surprise me. You can get this unit, or one that looks similar to it, um, on places like AliExpress and eBay. I think they use the same outer front uh, design to the hardware on various head units, and then various manufacturers can then add their own memory, storage, software, and whatever else but quite a few of them look like this unit uh, even though this one is an extra ones model and you can see the logo there so that's the packaging seems fairly robust let's get stand with the knife and open it up try not to put too deeply into it so this video is going to be the unboxing. Second video is going to be benchmarking the existing 2GB RAM version, which was bought about two years ago. And in fact, I'm not to just go the inside, but it doesn't matter. It's only packaging. <coughs> Let's get this one out. Okay, we've got a use we've got a user manual. Now, I'm interested to see whether this is unique to this one because I've already got a previous extra ones model similar to this one. Though looking at it, that does look like the new design for the front end. This looks very similar to the model, the uh, manual I've got for the previous head unit. This 
this is also supposed to be marginally better in other ways. Memory is probably the biggest difference. One thing I'm also looking for, there is actually a hidden menu. I say hidden, it was covered in the manual. I'm just looking to see whether it mentions it here. Because you do need to go into the hidden menu to do a few things like generally to switch setup, things like the RDS for the radio. Uh, I've not seen it mentioned yet. I'll have a look at that later. I'm guessing there is a hidden menu um, that probably goes, you probably go into it as you do on the previous one, but uh, we'll see about that. So that's that. Okay, next thing foam. Okay, bag of cables, which I have also from the previous one. To what extent I use the previous one, I'm not in the previous lot of cables already fit in the car, I'm not sure. I'll have a look at that in a second. Here's the head unit itself. Just get started with the knife on that again. Okay, not really a lot to say there. Extron just put their label on it. Fuse, some connections there. Outwardly, it does look very similar to the one I've already got fitted. Apart from this one, looks well, nice and shiny and new, but otherwise, not really any differences. Okay, so that is that unit. Doesn't seem to be anything else left in the box, so I'll put that to one side. Let's have a look at the bag of accessories. GPS antenna. I think I've already got that fitted in the car, so that's probably not needed. That is a CAN bus. That looks really like VHF area. Okay, let's have a look at that. That Looks like it goes into the back of the head unit there, and then that gives you all the various connections to other things. That looks like a VHF aerial adapter, so that probably, if you're using that, that probably goes in there like that, and then that goes in the back of the head unit. That Not 100% sure on all of that lot. Possibly goes into there like that. But we'll have a look at that when we start taking the car to pieces and uh, putting everything together. Okay. <coughs> USB connection. Okay, that. Probably useful for the DAB adapter. Another cable which probably goes into the 
Am I going to the back of the head unit? I'm not sure. Am I going to one of those? Okay. Right. So next thing I'll do is we'll have a look at the various instructions and by the time I come to the third video we'll see how all this lot fits together. As you can see quite a bit of cabling. Chances are most of it I don't need because it's we already have an extra one's head unit fitted. Uh, so a lot of it might be just swap one for the other but we'll have a look at that when we get to that stage. Second video is going to be benchmarking the existing two gigabyte RAM unit so that we can then see by the time we get to the third one, the third video, uh, just what difference it's made. But for now, that is what you get in the box. Thanks for watching, look forward to the next two.